so uh, we want to go ahead and get started with uh, with our meeting on tonight. Uh, I want to welcome everybody uh, to the meeting, and um, our meeting tonight, you know, is is concerning the ordinance number twenty twenty one, and we have some committee people, people who signed up and volunteered to be on the committee which is made up of our city government along with our uh, citizens so that we can have a discussion. I don't want to go that, go that far. I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. And we're going to do our best to be timely, uh, let you share whatever you want to share, uh, as much as you can share it. But um, we want to get started from there. And uh, I'm going to start with opening up with prayer. So I'm going to ask Reverend Buckinson if he will start us off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this evening with our heads and our hearts. We pray, oh God, that you will um, be with us even in this meeting that we're having today. Give us insight, give us um, direction, help us. We pray that God, this meeting will be done in health, decently, and more according to the will of your way. Bless our efforts and even our endeavors. Look over the city and this government. We pray, oh God, that you just bless us like only you have and only you can. These are the blessings. Amen. Again, I want to thank uh, those who have come and those who are serving on the committee uh, to have this discussion. Uh, just to summarize, you know, we were introduced to this ordinance uh, last, last month uh, in our city council meeting. It was introduced in the foreign court. And um, that ordinance is concerning establishing a committee procedures in respecting the grades and public assembly. So with that being said, I think for clarity purposes, the way we want to run the meeting is we first want to establish the grounds on which the order was introduced to us, and the ordinance was introduced to us, so that we can have clarity. So I'm going to ask, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to ask uh, our chief if he would uh, kind of tell us how, it, how the ordinance was introduced. Okay. Well, it, it was sent out from uh, our city attorney who drafted the ordinance. Uh, the county had an ordinance that was that uh, it's really a good ordinance. The Little Rock's ordinance has been um, utilized for them by, by them for years. Um, probably a little out of scale with our population and necessarily with our needs per se. Um, there's a lot of things in there I think that we can probably agree on that we can that we can trim down if, if the city attorney agrees. But that's pretty much how it came about. We, we've discussed it in the past. Um, or it's been brought up in the past about parades, and it's an issue that, that the police department has to deal with, which is what I'm here for, is to relay the, um, the concern of law enforcement, or the, or the situation of law enforcement, and get your input uh, as to how the city wants to proceed, how the community wants us to proceed uh, when we have certain events going on. Um, but that's pretty much the ordinance. I mean, that's how, that's how it came to pass. I mean, it was brought up that, you know, hey, we have you know, competing uses at times for facilities, and we have competing interests, uh, say, of a, uh, say, a candlelight vigil in a parking lot, and then that parking lot is also a business, and then the business has no place to have its customers park. Mm -hmm. And so the police department receives complaints about that. Um, and, and, and this pretty much what we're, what we're looking to do, and hopefully with, with what we can all accomplish here, uh, is to come up with something that kind of sets some guidelines um, so it gets everybody on the same page, and so the community and law enforcement can uh, organize and communicate much more effectively than what we've done in the past. All right. Um, so from there, you heard how and the reason why it was established, or it, uh, trying to be introduced so that we can come together on the same page, so that we can eventually get to what would be, do we want it? Do we want it at all? Do we not want it? And make some type of recommendation. From there, what I asked the committee to do was is to I asked them to submit in writing uh, what their concerns were. But what we're going to do, I didn't get everybody's um, concerns in writing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow everyone to speak and share your concerns about this ordinance, and uh, then we'll go from there. So. We can have volunteers, or I can go around the room. I do want to ask the chief or whoever can answer this question, mm -hmm. and 
that is uh, prior to uh, this discussion, what has been put in place? What has our what, what, what has been your policy or procedures up until this point? Well, that's the thing. There hasn't been. There's no consistent. If if you decide to hold a parade, there's a different set of procedures than if say Cedric was Cedric made or, or I say a parade of uh, anything, candlelight vigil or a, uh, a march or whatever. There's no set procedure. And that's what we're trying to establish so we can better prepare uh, for the event. Um, if we have a set um, or just some parameters, you know, that, that say uh, if, if we're going to have a parade and the parade should be from this point to this point, um, that we can know how many intersections we're going to have to cover. Know how many officers we're going to have to, we're going to need to, to make sure that the parade doesn't get broken up in this continuity. Uh, know when it's going to end, or at least a rough time when it's going to end. So we can go out and we can make the necessary adjustments. And, and, uh, if it's on the square, I mean, somebody's going to, we're all going to start pointing at each other going, well, I thought you were going to tell the Italian place that this is today. Well, I thought you were. Well, I thought I was. Oh, we were going to, and then nobody wants to do it. And I would rather the police department assume the responsibility of that. So we know it got done and we have a point of contact. Um, so just basically make it to where we're all on the same page and doing it the same every time and, and setting the same guidelines and rules. So each group that wants to have a parade or a, a march, we all do it the same. I mean, we all have the same procedures that we follow. So it's fair that way. All right. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you have like a ballpark figure of how many organizations or people are having assemblies and parades that's in any given calendar year? No, we, see, we, it's well, something that we've never kept up with, I guess. It's, I don't know of anybody that does. Well, we have, a, we have basically, you can count on three, maybe four, you have the parade. You have the Christmas parade, you have the fair parade, you have the Martin Luther King parade, and do they, I was thinking they still have homecoming. Do they still have a homecoming parade? Mm -hmm. No. No. UAM. Are you aware you're talking about UAM? Yeah, well, they have they had a homecoming parade on the streets. I think he's meaning for the high schools in the area. Yeah, like high school. Do they still do that? I, yeah. Well, I think COVID threw a loop. Okay, well, basically you have three parades that go on here. Like I said, that's Martin Luther King, the Fair Parade, and the Christmas Parade. Well, to, to go back to your point here, one of the things that you said that we didn't have a problem with, let me tell you some of the problems that we had. Uh, we had uh, an incident, it's not bad, uh, some kids got together and they wanted to pay their respects to the classmates. Um, we had no problem with that. We encouraged that. We did get some complaints from business owners, however, because they didn't have enough places, places to park. The, their customers did. We want to be able to keep it to where we can have it uh, a good working relationship. If, if I'm going to need to use your driveway, you should know. I should get your permission and let you know. And if not, I should let you know, hey, um, we're going to be here from say 7 to 8 or we're going to be here from this time to this time so a property owner or a business owner would be able to at least uh, make arrangements you know with their staff and with their customers um, as far as significant problems no I mean I, I mean anything major absolutely not but the police department has services that they can offer that would expedite and make the process easier faster, safer, and I think that it's not my job to tell you guys how to draft this, but it's my job to advise you of issues and problems that the city may face eventually. And as we encounter them, not when it's expedient in any other way uh, to, to bring it up. We see something wrong. If I see something wrong or my officer sees something wrong, we have the obligation to take that to the mayor, to the council, and to the citizens and say, hey, we've got this issue. Um, we have some problems with it. We had one parade last year that I think was seven or eight intersections. We had three officers on it. 
Uh, we want to be able to make sure that a parade can go through and that somebody doesn't drive through an intersection that they think is protected and have a wreck because that happened. I think in Texas this past week, someone broke traffic for the 4th of July parade. There's got to be some type of control, uh, or at least some direction, uniformity. <coughs> the more communication that we can we can have, the better. And that's all we're trying to do is work with, you know, work with the community and see what, uh, you know, what we can do to, to make things better and safer. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I understand all of that, but you kind of compare that to. I know you use Texas as an example. Wherever it was in Texas, that's probably the biggest population that was this year, 8,000 people. Um, I understand the need, what you're saying for it, and it probably never will ever be a good time for this, but just some of the things that's involved in it, I just want to. Are you talking about they're involved in the ordinance? In the ordinance, yes. Yeah. Well, the ordinance is just a framework. And we can, and, and Mr. Martin's here for that purpose. I mean, that's just a place to start. And we can whittle out and take in and put out whatever we, whatever we need. So there were some other concerns uh, as far as the introduction of the ordinance. Well, the introduction of the ordinance is one thing. But I think what we should, with the lawyer, define every Thing that's on here and what can be eliminated and what can't be eliminated. And I think we should just start basic with parades. You know, you got to see right now there's no procedure. I done pulled every piece of paperwork I can find. There's no procedure. I guess it's just we don't have a Christmas parade on this day. So I think we need to just go back and say, well, put the put this in 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 and put this in the ordinance that you have to fill out the, type, the proper paperwork just like the ordinance state and have your Christmas parade, whatever, Martin Luther King parade, the traditional parade that we've been having. And it's saying go by the city, but you know, the city doesn't do this. The park department does it. So we can say with the parade, we can start off with, like I said, with the parade. Then you got the rent of this building. You might want to rent a pavilion. See, all that goes through the park department. All that goes through the park department. And I don't know if the mayor signs off on it or what, but we can eliminate that part simple for the parade. If you don't have a parade for whatever, you fill out an application for it. And like you said, where it's going to start and where it's going to end. And that'll take care of the whole parade issue. Right. And they got the guidelines for, like you said, renting the building, renting the pavilion. You can rent the pavilion and any park, but you don't rent the park. You can't rent the park. You know, if you want to have something that's a pavilion and you rent it, the little pavilion or the big pavilion, you rent it, that's yours. You can't control nothing that goes around outside that park. Mm -hmm. Just because you sponsor it, and somebody's over there uh, barbecuing and smoking on your way, and then you do about it. You can't have a right. So we take care of the thing. Like I said, the, the ordinance is not an ordinance, but it's in place already for renting the parks. Mm -hmm. When you rent, yeah, the procedures are in place for renting the parks, the pavilion, I mean, renting pavilions and stuff like that. That's already in place. We just have to put in an ordinance that you have to go through the park department or the mayor slash mayor to do that parades and rent the <coughs> the uh, provisions. Yeah, I think you're still gonna, you're still going to run into the problem though of, the, of there's going to be some mechanism in place to let parks is going to need to let the police department know because we're going to be the ones having a lot of traffic. Parks don't want to Well, that's something like y'all have to get together. Of. Like right now. Everything goes through the park. The park. Right. So if there's a, like I said, everybody knows when the Christmas parade is going to be, or right. the fair parade, second September. Or so <coughs> that'd be a communication between the, the park.
Park, the mayor, and the chief of police. There, there's, there's, I agree with you. I think that some issues that you might run into, though, um, on, a, on a state or city maintained road, there are certain things that can't go on that road. And I don't know that parks would want to um, assume the responsibility of knowing the legalities of what can and can't be on the road. But uh, as of now, whatever goes on has been going on for the last 55 yeah, years. Yeah, I'm just saying, but I'm saying, do I mean, you want to build the ordinance for what's been going on for 55 years or what's going to be going on in the next 55? You can build it backwards when you go to court. I agree. I mean, I, I'm with you. I'm not saying, but I think you need to have it where it's the same process. Uh, but there needs to be a, an understanding by whoever does it that, that the police department's going to need to know. If you want that intersection block, you're going to let them know. Okay, what? so uh, am I understanding taking the parade out of this particular ordinance is what you're saying, period, concerns about parades? Or, I'm, I'm really getting confused because what type of parades are we talking about? No, I'm not talking about taking the parades out. Mm -hmm. We have no ordinance mm -hmm. or standard way of doing a parade. There's no paperwork that you file to do a parade. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, you're going to have to get a permit to hold the, the fair parade. That makes it pretty short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not the next time. I think that's what the ordinance is trying to um, create, is a streamlining of the process of all of this. Yes. And, and, and I said we talk, we tackle the legacy. Put it in the ordinance. If you want to rent the parade, I mean, you want to rent the park, the pavilion, or you want to have the normal parade, Christmas parade, whatever, you still have to have a permit. And then it's up to the mayor and the park department to let the police know, other than word of mouth and being in the newspaper, that the parade is coming up anyway. So, so that's covered easily. I think that's, that's not a big debate issue. So I'm, I'm assuming you're saying then add the renting of pavilions or using community centers to this ordinance here? Is yes, because it's city okay. property. Right, okay. And you already have to go through the, uh, the application to rent now. It's just not, I mean, what's the difference between an application and a permit? No. Well, there's an application that you give the city and the permit that the city gives you. Okay. okay. So, Thank you. like right now, you have a permit. <laughs> okay. So, is there a form that you all have created already no, no, for no. the permit? No. Oh. That's, that's, that's to be done. It depends. It depends on all resolutions. Question for clarification, please. Could Mr. Barton kind of explain more? I haven't heard the parts. Commission involved in this before? Can he kind of clarify a little bit of what Mr. Leonard said as far as them overseeing? If that's possible, sir. Well, I'm not sure it is. Mr. Leonard can certainly speak for himself, but I think that, that what we've got here and, and the, the issue will be who's the, the point of contact. Uh, is If someone comes in and they want to have a parade, they want to run a building, whatever whatever the sort of interaction is, there, whether it's, it's, a, it's a protest, it's a gathering, it's a happy celebration, whatever it is, who's the point, who's the point of contact? And, and I think that's, that, 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 that was the, the, the well, that's what I took away from his, his comments, is who's the point of, of, of contact? Okay. As, far as, as far as running the city buildings are concerned, that's fine, we can, we can deal with it. I, I would be somewhat reluctant to have a different point of contact for a parade as opposed to a, 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 a protest or some some other type of thing because at some point what's you know how do you define it what's the difference between a parade or or, or a protest to, to, to bring some sort of subject to light so I think that contact person wherever the city decides to have it whether it's with the parks department the, the city hall or the police department or wherever um, need, that probably needs to be Thank you, sir. Because it was uh, suggested to me that um, some citizens were saying that uh, they could do an ordinance that just did not include the parade period in it, but actually, we're talking about concern, right? And so, took the part out of the parades and just uh, in respect to public assemblies, 
it, it's just my thought is that even though sometimes these gatherings, and I think that's what maybe a better a word I like better, whatever handle we put on it, they, they may have different purposes. One may be celebratory, the other may be to where to appropriately raise public awareness and consciousness to a contentious issue. Mm -hmm. Whatever the purpose is, they create some of the same issues for the police, and they create for, for public safety, and somewhat different. I mean, you know, we, we all know, I know, with, with my business being on North Main Street, the Crew County Fair Parade mm -hmm. uh, creates lots of issues. They might you know, leave my 334 parking lot getting home. Um, <laughs> you know, I going to come see you, and I going to park in your parking lot. Uh, you're going to create your own, own issues, but the, I just, I think that the same focal point needs to exist. Mm -hmm. And parades, while are celebratory, they're important for our sense of community, mm -hmm. uh, see a child's face at the Christmas parade, I mean, all that's very important. Mm -hmm. But they do create some issues that the city needs to be able Manage. The good news about most of our parades is there are re repeated annual events so that to a certain extent the, 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 the city employees have got this down. I mean, the Brew County Fair Parade is pretty much the same every year. The Christmas Parade is the same every year. The, the school parade I and mean, all those things you know, look a lot the same in terms of size and complexity and all from year to year, but there's still those things do exist and, and signing up for them is that's one thing, but everybody kind of knows when they are anyway. But, but I, 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 mean, I, I would much prefer to maintain any gathering of whatever the purpose of the gathering is under, under the umbrella of the ordinance. Okay. So it doesn't matter what type of parade. Oh, it's this not would about include, This doesn't need to make a distinction between the type of parade, like you said, celebratory or for their candidate or for whatever, whatever reason, this would cover all of it. And this would cover all of it and right. Okay. Now, I think also the question is uh, we're making an ordinance for the city amongst us. Yes. It don't include Winchester. Wilma, nobody that, no other little town is in the county. This is just the city of Minnesota. Yes. Okay. Ma'am. I'm thinking you don't think that women are affected by this ordinance, but you, Monticello is the center of your county. And every resident in Wilma, Winchester, Chiller, they ought to come here. We can go to the same courthouse. Okay. You all beating around the bush, and I'm going to be frank. You all are passing this ordinance because of the protest. It was brought up because of the protest of Marquis Martin. Yes. And that's why we're here today to represent and to speak up and to allow you all to know that we know. It was presented to the chief. It was presented to the mayor by the county judge. Had he not brought that up, this would never be an issue. The parade has been going on for hundreds of years People in Monticello, the Christmas Parade. Everybody knows that. Okay, there's been several events here in Monticello, and you know nothing occurred at that parade. We had a peaceful protest, but the reaction to it is act like a bunch of wild, crazy, undressed, uncouth, uncivilized people were out there destroying the city of Monticello breaking windows, breaking glasses, that wasn't the case. But you're reacting to it as if that's the case. And my thing is, is pass your ordinance if you have to, if you want to, if you fear these types of activity. But we have a right to protest. That's right. We have a right to be on that public courthouse square yes. as yes. citizens of this town. Yes. So you cannot shut us down.
Yeah. It's yeah. very insulting to our intelligence. Amen. And we're not ignorant people. Yeah. Thank you. And we know that. And we that's what we know that this is. To we, nobody been nobody been to bait at the right. corn court. That's right. Okay. Nobody been to bait. But they're gonna go another avenue. Because guess what? They want to get their way. And they're going to use whatever power they in, in that be to get their way. So when they get their way, then what is that saying to us? Yeah. If you get your way, what are you saying to us? That one protest caused the county judge to go to Little Rock, Arkansas to get an ordinance to pass in Monticello, Arkansas, Drew yeah. County. Is that really necessary? The ordinance you need to pass can be two sentences. If you're going to have a protest, give us a week advance notice. If you're going to have a parade, put it on the calendar. These things are simple. But when you go on, if you read the ordinance and the things that they're saying that need to be in place, it's ridiculous, in my opinion. Well, Mr. Perry, I understand what you're saying. And that's why when I said we talked about parades, and when we just talk about protests and everything else, that's different. That's different. We try to get clarity on a parade. Because whatever organization wanna have a parade, I don't want to be here all night. I don't want to go through this next month twice. We just if we can get guidelines down for a parade. Then yeah, that's one thing. With the Wilma Parade, I can't see. We have no jurisdiction over it. Correct? That's right. We have we're, no not, we're, we're not talking about the Wilma no, no, Parade. We, but I'm, what I'm saying is, we're trying to write an ordinance since it's brought up. We know why it's brought up. Yes, we do. We know why it's brought up. We know that. Everybody knows that. That's why I was pulled from the county at the time. It was tabled with the city. But we're going to have to. With this issue coming up, we got to get guidelines for a parade. My wife is crying. Now, when you want to talk, I don't want to talk about it, but when you want to talk about a protest, I can't see nobody stopping. I mean, hey, I can't. I really, I, I really can't <coughs> by law because it's a constitutional right. I think right. Right. It's so, it's right. Right. But we're trying to get right. first, right. first get the simple thing down for the parade. <laughs> We have parades that go on all through the year. That's like you said, they're on the calendar. You know when they have them. We just want to get to where when they have a fair parade or the homecoming, whatever parade it is, you go get a permit, you go get an application and file it, and that covers that. I want to say this too. We haven't passed anything. We're having a discussion tonight to come to a resolution and to make a recommendation. So I want to get that straight because anything that leaves out, we want to make sure it comes with clarity. We haven't passed anything. We were selected to have this type of discussion about why, who, what, when, and why, and why it may be necessary, if we agree it would be necessary, get your opinion just like you've given, uh, air it out like you said, because there's, you know, we know that there's been a concern about the timing of which. So we know that getting around to that. But hadn't anything passed. This is to come to a recommendation to our city, if I'm correct. As if we even want to have an ordinance or the second thing, it may be an application that can resolve the issue. The chief says, I need to know who, what, when, and where, and how. An application could resolve some things because we need to know what's going on around us. And he's trying to provide that type of protection for the, those who will protest, who will be in parade, who will do whatever. But that may come to that point. So yeah, we're just having a discussion right now, but again, we haven't passed anything. We're coming to a resolution. Some of us think there should be an ordinance. Some of us think that there should not be an ordinance. As I said, it may be an application that will that will help things. That's because the city or the police chief, if they're going to do their job, they need to know something. That's all that they're that I think it is it, it needs. Well, and, and Ms. Perry, I, I will agree. I will agree with what you said. 
I think we can shorten this way down. Mm -hmm. We just need to know when. Exactly. And, and here's the thing, if, and one of the points that we make, if we have a point of contact, you know, if you're planning, let's just say you're planning to protest uh, gas prices tomorrow, of course, I'd probably be out there with you. Okay. But if you're protesting gas prices tomorrow, all right, and there's somebody that says that she shows up protesting gas prices, we're going to have a problem. All right, if, if, the, if law enforcement knows about it, I can have people there if you want them. If you say, "Hey, I'm fine with that. I don't. I'm fine with them being there. I'm fine with them not. We got some threats. Some anti people trying to inhibit us from protesting. I don't want to get a call to respond after someone's been hurt, stepped out in traffic, whatever. After the fact, if we could have prevented it, that's our whole point. I don't care if we protest pro-gun, anti-gun, pro-abortion, anti-abortion. Or this, whatever. That's none of my business. My political views, I've got nothing to do with it. But if I've got to call in five officers to help with a protest or to separate two opposing groups, if you want protection while you're protesting, or if anybody does, then we need to know. Because a protest that's going on, say, on the square, and let's just say there's a, a, a bad traffic accident at 425 and 278. And I don't know about the protest or the rally, or as uh, Reverend Buffett and I talk about something that's equally important, it's getting completely out of the shadows with all this other stuff, is, is the, the, uh, the, the chance to have a candlelight vigil for someone who passed away. I can't just let a wreck sit at 425 and 278 and get a uh, candlelight vigil or a protest. I just need to have the people in to effectively provide protection. And so if somebody doesn't step out of the traffic, or somebody doesn't show up and cause trouble for the people who are protesting. This ordinance, putting it in place, protects the protest. It's She's the bomb, look at her. This is not about anything in particular. Honestly, it should have been done a long time ago. Uh, Little Rock's got one, a lot, a lot of different cities have it. So a lot of them are way more restricted than what we're wanting. We just need notice. That's all we need, is notice. And if it's gonna be moving from point A to point B, you're going to want an intersection block, probably, unless you want to take a chance and monitor the traffic, which I wouldn't. But that's that's all our point is. Just communicate. We're not trying to inhibit, prohibit, whatever. We just want to be communicated. That's all. So I asked the, the city attorney, what if we wanted to bring this to an application for what you just said? Who, what, when, where, why? They kind of we don't even want to know why. Okay, we're, we're, we're good with where, where are you going to be? When okay. are you going to be there? Do you need us? Okay. That's all we care about. So, in order to even introduce an application, we would have to have an ordinance in place. You have to do the application. Okay. We have to have an ordinance. To say, to say you have to have an application. Okay. That we have to have an application. So, with that being said, <laughs>
I think, I, I think it's the, 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 the overview, as I understand it, from the city folks that, that have asked me to, to help them with this is we want to know what's going on mm -hmm. so that we can manage our affairs and manage public safety, not regulate assembly or regulate speech. Mm -hmm. That comes up by the government it wouldn't last any time at all. And we can do that. There was one issue that was brought up, Reverend Buster brought up, not that we expounded more on that, but um, there was some discussion about um, Typically, in most of your cities, they'll have a, and I know, I, I think I've failed with what I've read, but it's an extended amount of notice that you have to give. And I don't think that that's applicable here. Um, I think that if, you, if we could have a reasonable amount of time of notice to adequately prepare for whatever the event was, um, that's, that would be great. I think, you know, and I'll leave that up to you, but I think 24 hours, 48 hours, something along those lines is fine with that. That gives us time to let people know don't get too comfortable at home tomorrow, we might need you to come in. The other issue, and I'll let Buck, Reverend Buckington expand a little bit on that, but when things happen that require, and, and maybe not immediate, but soon after response, <coughs> fall into a time frame not specified by the ordinance, what does this committee suggest happen there? Repeat that, Brett. Mm -hmm. Okay, what he's asking, when we talk about breaking the news, if an incident mm -hmm. happens, mm -hmm. Uh, that requires the citizens of Monticello County to be able, whether it be an incident with a police issue. Uh, I can tell you right now that people are not going to come asking for a permit to protest against an injustice that's already been done. Thank you. The notice that you're going to get is the moment the incident happened, that's going to be the notice. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying is that we don't want to feel that we have to come to the city to get a permit to protest against something that has been justice that's been done perhaps by a city official or at yeah. or all those lines. So uh, well my where, where we run into to conflicting things here, um, I understand your perspective. Yeah. Um, so who's going to tell that waitress that the Italian place she can't work tonight? Is that going to be people who randomly show up and protest, or as long as we're still going to do that? So what we're trying to do is deconflict. And if I'm an employee at, at a business, um, and I show up and I can't get into work, and I'm trying to save tip money to buy a baseball uniform, um, I'm probably going to be agitated at whoever's out there doing whatever. So if there is some communication, I think if we have something, then we can see if we can find a, a spot in between here. Yeah. But if there was a, a, a very important issue that occurred that it was within the time frame, you know what I mean, of, of say if we set a 48 hour notice, it might have been 12 hour notice. That a good faith effort be made to contact law enforcement at least let us know let let us let the businesses know well i'm gonna well, say this, i'm gonna go back and say this let me, let me say this if if one of our young citizens is if an incident like the floyd incident happens we pray to god that it does not happen in the city of Monsanto. but excuse me it is it is mark east mark mark east mark okay it is all right that's why we should wish it so if, if these if the citizens come together to protest, they're not they're saying they're not gonna give you no 48 hour notice. I understand. They're not gonna give you not 48 hours. No, I'm not gonna give you I mean well, I mean if it happens, just expect that the citizens are going to protest. They're going to their voices are going to be heard. Now, how do you control that? How what are you that's gonna be left up to you guys. Jeff more than the waitress, well, I don't know how you want to get your tips today. I mean, mm -hmm. at this point in time, so. If I may, um, the ACLU um, on its website for protesters and knowing your rights, it says that police can't use uh, procedures such as that to prevent a protest that can respond to breaking news events. So I think well, that's, that that's And that's true, and that's true, and we're not trying to. I know, uh, I know. what I'm, I'm saying is just because I have the right to protest doesn't give me the right to break the law. I and if I decide to protest, uh, at tomorrow out in front of his church and I don't let anybody go in the, because it's something that upsets me and I don't let anybody, I stand in the way. Are you going to call the police and say, hey, 
you can't get into my church because this guy's standing in the way. Um, I'm breaking the law by doing that. I'm yes. constructing a highway. Yes. And yes. so you understand it. And, and look, you got to do with it what you want. I'm just telling you. When you have a situation, if it's a peaceful protest, you're protected under the First Amendment for mm -hmm. peaceful protest. Yes, I know. Right? I, 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 yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yes. And I, so I, it doesn't give you the right just because it's breaking news to go out and do whatever you want to do. Yes. Yeah, so there, I, there, I, there, I, there's got to be some order to it. Mm -hmm. And and I found personally, from both sides of the spectrum, you'll get a whole lot more done doing it peaceful, and you'll gain a lot more support for your cause doing it peaceful and doing it right than you will. You know, just mob rushing a business or something. You know, oh. and I'm not saying that's going to happen here. I'm just saying we can prevent that by communication. As the ordinance says, um, that as long as you, it says specifically on part one, on the definitions part, um, it defines what a public assembly is, and it's tells, it says things like meeting, demonstration, picket line, rally, or gathering of more than 20 persons. Um, and specifically, the part I had to question about was it says occupying any public area in a place open to the general public. So I protested in many events around this country and right here in Arkansas last like summer right here in Monticello. So I know that as a citizen I have the right to protest. I also know that I can't block the entrance of a place. For example, I know that if I went in front of his church, that's his property, so I can't get on that. So what I'm saying is maybe there also needs to be a concentrated effort after we pass this to inform citizens of their rights so they know you can Absolutely. protest wherever you want to but these are Absolutely. guidelines so that if you all show up you won't be arrested but i think in general exactly. most people know that as long as you're not blocking the entrance or you're not blocking the road or something like that you can peacefully protest exactly. that's the point that i was trying to and, and we're on we're on the same page yeah, that's, what I was saying. That, yeah. that's really important i know we probably wouldn't get a chance to, but that's what I wanted to be brought out, that there's a responsibility that we have. There's, uh, we know we have our rights, but there's also a responsibility to give other people like the city, the government rights to do things if you don't do them properly. So we all need to be educated on how it's supposed to be done. She's in that ground line that Marquis Mellon was sitting. Marquis is mom. The day that you protested, I had 14 officers close by watching you and making sure that you were okay. Thank you. They were all there. Thank you. Um, we have an obligation, despite the case or the politics or whatever with it, I have an obligation to everybody in this town, regardless of their, their economic background or their social background, to protect them. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here. Now, if one of the things, and, I, and I, I, I wouldn't ask for a show of hands, but I know that several of you in here have concealed weapon permits. Um, that's a constitutional right, that Second Amendment, that nobody bats an eye at getting a permit for. We're offering something free that gives us a heads up so we can better protect the people that are protesting. And we can better protect, because you know, there may be people coming here and protesting that none of us like. And we're gonna need rules in place for them too. Um, but nothing's gonna go on in this city, hopefully, that we don't have our eye on from the standpoint of protecting the citizens. That's what we're here for. That's why I brought this up. I understand it's not popular, you know what, that's fine. But if we can all get on the same page and we can show people that we can work together, then every bit of it's worth it. But here's our opportunity. Here's everybody's opportunity to work together and for me to give a little bit and for him to give a little bit, for her to give a little bit, and let's all meet in the middle and resolve it. Something we can all live with. Here's our chance. So this is what I propose, the, the ordinance, to have an application, uh, some type of wording that will provide you with what you need as an application instead of, well, we got to, I don't know how, it would be, I know there, we all have come to the agreement that this needs to be given. <laughs> right. We already know. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. We already know. 
Yes, sir. Can this application uh, be presented at every day of the week? Or is this something between Monday and Friday? Or, or can it be done every day, of, every day of the week? And a permit be given any day, every day of the week? If, if I have an issue on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. if I can, let's for example, if the police department mm -hmm. is a place where I present the application mm -hmm. and they have per permission to give me a permit, mm -hmm. they will have their notice, immediate notice. Mm -hmm. And so they can prepare for it. Right. It seems to me that an application will fix it if an application can be submitted any day of the week, at any time of the week, perhaps through the police department, mm -hmm. and they too can give me permission to have uh, a protest at any time, mm -hmm. as long as they are notified. They will have their notification mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay, if if they present it, if I present, if I uh, make the application at 7 p.m. tonight, mm -hmm. he will know at 7:05 whether he's going to give me a permit to do it or not, therefore he has not infringed upon my right uh, for peaceful assembly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think what we might want to do, if an application will fix it, have it uh, provide that an application uh, can be submitted at any day and any time of the week, and a permit can be given any day and any time of the week. And the police department is, is notified, mm -hmm. everybody can go on about their way. I, I, and holidays, that would be something too. If yeah, something yeah, happened, yeah. you know, the day before Thanksgiving, and yeah. you know, uh, that's another. That's a, a great point. And I think that, you know, that's something that the council can work out. Uh, that in the absence of, if, if the absence of, you know, exigent circumstances is I think the term you <coughs> use when you have exigent circumstances uh, that come up, like you said, something short notice, late night. I think that if we could word that, and this is just a Mr. Barton question, but if someone just makes due diligence, shows due diligence to notify uh, whoever the council selects as the point of contact, be it the mayor or the police chief or whoever, uh, that someone tried their best to get a permit, uh, they made the proper steps as much as they could based on what they were, uh, the conditions at the time, that, uh, that a permit uh, could be granted based on the fact that they really tried to get in touch with the, the mayor or the Chief or whoever, and they were both gone. Um, that they, they they can document that. It shouldn't be an issue. I don't have an issue with it. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. We just need to know where you're going. You know, if you're going to move from uh, from um, point A to point B, say if you're going to have a, a rally here and you're going to march to point B, like the uh, one you did a year and a half ago, um, we knew where you're going. We knew which intersections to cover. So we didn't have to worry about cars coming up and breaking up the crowd, people walking, and then you got stragglers, and you got my kids are there <coughs> off to the side and get lost, and you can prevent all that just by that, like what you're talking about, just a little bit of forewarning for the notice, and I think you got it resolved relatively easy. So I need to know what is this all about? Good afternoon. I would suggest uh, introducing the ordinance for an application. That way, you put all the uh, the verbiage, the language that uh, Dr. Uh, Branch has uh, spoke of, and the rest of the committee uh, application, and then with uh, a personal contact. If the personal contact is going to be the police department chief of police or whatever the case may be, let it be that, and then he can branch out to the mayor and uh, the uh, city attorney, whatever. But to make this uh, meeting whole teeth, mm -hmm. and I think everybody can put in application. Mm -hmm. So let's introduce the ordinance for that. Well, I strongly believe that, you know, we got rights to protest as Americans and nobody in this world ever had to get a permit to protest. I just think this is Monticello, Arkansas, and being the situation that this occurred, they're doing this to try to stop us from protesting or try to stop us from protesting. And I don't feel like we should have to fill out nothing. 
and we want a peaceful protest. We, as Americans, as black people, have a right to do that without having to give you guys uh, uh, fill out an application. Now, but that's just unheard of. It really is only only I can tell that I said. I'm from the city. I know better shit than this. Excuse me. It's only in Arkansas. They try to undermine black people, and that's exactly what y'all trying to do in this meeting. Tell us we gotta get permission to protest, and it's a civil right. We gotta let y'all know. We have to get a piece of paper saying it's okay. Really? Really? I think the this paper, I think the paper, I think the paper is in, is to the advantage of the citizens of North Carolina, which protects you uh, from any injustice that somebody else might want to do. Yeah, we're we're in small town North Carolina, but anything can happen in the time anywhere. Yes. And I think the paper is there to protect you uh, as citizens. And they, we, they was protecting us when we protested before, and we did not have a permit. Didn't he just say there was officers there? Yeah. They're just doing this to undermine us because of the circumstances, and so therefore, they want us to get permission to protest, and we don't have to. We got rights. It's, it's just something y'all came up with. It's a word I've been hearing ever since I said I am. I know. And it's, it's about communication. Uh, it ain't about we, no peace of communication. We have got to communicate with each other. And you need to stay sitting down there. You ain't trying to make it. I have a right to talk. I need to be. We have got to communicate with each other. I don't think it's. It's like a I don't think it's about discernment or communion. Uh, it's about us communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. I have just as much right uh, for police protection as anybody in this room. I pay taxes in the city of Minnesota and the state of Arkansas just like everybody in this room. And if we don't get on one page and communicate with each other, hey, Chief, uh, we doing such and such a thing down here just to let us know. Now, somebody might come down there, I might need uh, police protection. I mean, you got to look at it, the whole big picture. Let's not have a problem. It's okay to let them know it, but then the police can be out of paper. I feel out of application. Okay, from my understanding, we're going around. Uh, we're going to do, you said an application or an order. Okay, we have to do an ordinance in order to introduce the application to have that. I did want to say this is that, okay, so if we, if we do that, of course, there, you're not going to be fine, am I, for not filling it out. I mean, because you have the right still, you're not trying to break no, anybody's you can't, constitutional you can't right. Well, some cities do. Some cities do okay. charge a fee. Mm -hmm. With Mr. Barton and I, we, we discussed that, and, uh -huh. and, and I, we, we yeah. shouldn't have to pay a fee mm -hmm. for constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. um, the when you fill out the application, mm -hmm. um, and, and you can, if it makes anybody feel better, you can change the name from application to uh, notice of purpose. Just a notification. I mean, it's this, because because it, it's an application implies that you're applying and you can be rejected. No. I would I would I would assume. Okay. But if you want to change it to where it's a notice of of, of march, rally, protest, whatever, mm -hmm. suits me. Call it what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to be able to protest. And you want, if somebody's going by and, and, and you know, because everything's done on social media these days and, and people banner back and forth, and if somebody's going to go by and throw water bottles at whoever's protesting, it would be a whole lot wiser if I was a protester. I'm like him. I would want a cop right down the road so whoever hit me with that water bottle, they could go get them. I wouldn't want to call and go, hey, you guys offered to come down here and help us. We didn't want you. Now we need you. And that's what happens in law enforcement a lot. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it winds up something that could have been handled with communication on the front end. Simple on I'm the front end. I'm not saying I communicate with you guys. Right. Um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, don't let you know that we're going to have a protest. I'm just saying I don't think we should have to get permission to. Period. Duly noted.
you, you make your own home, and, and the last one was peaceful. So I don't even know, you know. It, it was peaceful. It was, and that's how we plan on it. It was peaceful. It's the peaceful thought. That's how we all plan on going. Right? But exactly. they don't always go that way. But, I, you know, she, she informed the sheriff that she was going to have a protest. He knew that. So, I mean, that's all we need to do. We don't need to get permission to have a protest. Listen, I'll say the attorney just said it could be called a notification of a public gathering. Now, my understanding this is nobody can be locked up for not notifying anyone. Am I correct? That is correct. Provided, provided that they that in and, in and of itself, whoever it is, isn't breaking the law and doing what they're doing. Okay. Like if that's I decide to hold a protest in your yard, mm -hmm. then that's I'm trespassing. Okay. If I'm on private property or or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. If I'm obstructing the doors, mm -hmm. like we had discussed, if I'm standing, say y'all can't go in the courthouse, and I'm keeping y'all from going to be tagged on the guard, mm -hmm. yeah, I can be arrested because mm -hmm. I'm obstructing governmental operations. And that's the stuff they need to be educated about. Uh, there you go. Now, I'm gonna leave that part up to y'all. Okay. All right. I just need to know where y'all gonna do it. But the but the notification is not to put anybody in jail if they don't like if there's breaking news. And somebody goes out, you're still going to do your job. It's just that if it's something planned, right? If it's a planned gathering or you plan it within 24, 48 hours, you're just asking for the pertinent information so that they can be protected. Everybody can be protected. Well, then that's, and that's why that's why I don't find the logic in <coughs> why it is why is it a problem for someone to communicate it. I mean, I understand what you're saying, Rev, and I and I respect it. But if I'm mad about something yeah. and I'm going to go protest, um, that's fine. I can do that. But why would you? Well, I mean, just. Uh, you got a different person out. Every, that's right. That's right. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Look, anyway, yeah. no matter how, where we fall on the spectrum. Yeah. But, but I think if we can communicate it however we can that's determine, that's the first thing. That's the most important thing. Okay. Yes. Did Mayor Chase send a letter to be read or a statement in her absence tonight? No, she did not. She's not on the committee. Okay, I, I thought she would have been a part of the. Okay. Yeah. Question yeah. answered. Thank you. Well, we, this we, gentleman, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. He didn't try. Um, if we wanted to hold the gathering because uh, we felt some, someone who maybe worked at the courthouse and we wanted to have it there, if we give them a notice and then the courthouse is shut, then they kind of ruins the whole Well, thing. that's, that's, I understand that. That's county property. The city can't shut the courthouse down, Mr. Barton. Am I wrong? That is not the decision of the city of Mars. Yeah, so we don't, we don't, we don't have anything to do with, you know, what goes on there per se. It's, that's, uh, there are several spots in the city that are, are owned by the county. There's a couple spots out in the county, like the complex, that are owned by the city. So that's something that they would, we have no, no dog in that the, the purpose of a protest. If you're gonna say a protest, well, all the protest. If you're gonna protest, we already know you don't need permission. If you're gonna protest the issue, like you said, whether it's the city, the water, the water off, they jack the bills up. You're gonna protest that. If it's county, the sheriff department, the police department, that's what you're gonna protest. If we don't, if you want an ordinance to cover all this, put it in there. If you plan, like, okay, this, the, the protest, the last protest, when all this come about, it was actually planned. Mm -hmm. It was planned. If you're mad enough, don't plan, don't plan it, but don't tell them. That's my point. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, because like I said, if they shut it down, you ain't, you trying to bring attention to it. You have your right to protest by law. Right. If you want to plan protest, get a permit. If you want to parade, plan for parade, get a permit. That's all I'm saying. You keep saying if you, you mad at the time, you don't need a permit. You don't. Need a permit. You don't. Right. But I'm saying, if you plan it, they She's can't bad. turn it down. If they turn it down, go anyway. Be notified. Notified, right. Notified. 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 But if you mad, if somebody killed my grandson on the police department or whatever, I'm not going to wait to 
tell you that I didn't forget. I'm not. And you don't have to. I'm going to check this here. But I'm going to go into it. Everything ain't about police officers killing somebody. That's what I'm saying. And, and I looked in the news and I see 104 people shot in Chicago over the weekend. And I hadn't heard a single person say anything about it. Now, Monticello has not had an incident. With, we're talking about the city. We're talking about the police department. We have not had one incident that remotely relates to any of the stuff that's being discussed. Let's get us an ordinance together. Let's just quit trying to paint it out like it's going to be something to do with the police department. It's not. Well, no, I, I we wasn't. just need to be able to communicate. If you need the streets and you need an intersection block, you let us know so we can block it. Let's stop catastrophizing and dramatizing. Let's just get to the bottom of it. Like you said, let's have a simple notice of parade, notice of protest, notice of march, set a time frame. Tell us where you're going to start, where you're going to go if you want the intersections done, and let's just keep doing it. That's all we got to do. Because right here, everything that the city has, that on city owned, whether it's a vision or everything, is right here. You got to go get this application to rent the ball field and everything else. That's your application. That's your notice. If you want to rent this building, you can rent it. I mean, but what we make, what we're doing is make the ordinance say you got to go do what you're already going to. And that was my question from the start. What do we already have in place? Yeah. Yes. No. 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 We just said. No. 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 That's only for rental of buildings. No. That's exactly. got nothing to do with parades. Right. Oh, he right. said. Okay. Said, said is add the parade. Add, add the parade. That's all you need. Yeah. Okay. Add, okay. add whatever to that list. And then make up create a mechanism that relates that to the police department. I think honestly, I'm still going to stick by the fact on parade. Anything to do with highway, you're probably going to want to let the police department handle that, just because we're the only ones that think can stop traffic. You know, without the blue lights. You know, I mean, some things you need to go through. But but I think we can simplify this greatly. I mean, we're living in a state where you can walk down the street and carry an AR-15 on your rifle. I don't think we need to part in there about how big the pole should be on your sign. If you can walk down the street and carry a gun, we really worry about sticks. Yeah, here's what, what I'd like to do is I would like to revisit the grant from the kiddos. Uh, you know, our ordinance was at, at the time that this was done because the county was not in order. And it would only make sense that if they're going to do an ordinance, we're going to have an ordinance that they ought to be consistent with each other. You wouldn't even be eligible for a permit from the county and not eligible for a permit from city and you end up with confusion. The council, the county deal may or may not have happened, that's up to them. Um, what I would like to do is, is re-grant this with, with um, and, 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 and deal with some of the language. Now that's stylistic, it's not substantive, but deal with some language like notification of public assembly and uh, focus on the, the, the application part of it, make it pretty clear that the city doesn't have any business to reject the application. If they, if, right now, this is an application and permit process. And apparently the chief has indicated that, that he's he's comfortable with, a, with an ordinance that instead of dealing with applications and permits, deals with notification. And so you're probably going to take this nine-page uh, document and it's probably going to be strong for three pages. Same way that we've done city buildings, 
the way you're talking about right. this one. And then we have a notice of protest or rally. Our main thing is if I'm holding a protest uh, and uh, the assistant chief knows about it and he gets information that somebody's going to come by and try to shoot me or spray me with a water gun or whatever, he needs to be able to contact me and say, hey man, this is supposed to, we're here to talk about this. Just wanted you to know you're not going to change the date, you might want to move to a different location, whatever. We just need a point of contact when it's going to start. Like you said, notice of who, who, what, when, where, and how. We're all in agreement. So then, can we come to, because y'all talking about just going out, I ain't got time to draw it out for everything. <laughs> and that's the objective tonight, why I have in front of us, is that we can come to, I don't know what y'all be out of the but we can, because we were discussing it, but we can come to a resolution and a recommendation tonight that will actually move us forward. Our city attorney just made a suggestion if we could live with it, we just need to see if there's a consensus that the group that's on the committee, if we could live with the suggestion that he made to go and rewrite or edit this ordinance to include a notice of public gathering and what should happen from there. And then we can bring it back and introduce it within how long does it take you to do that? Oh, we would have this ready to take to the city council in the August meeting. Uh, we're, we're just, you know, okay. with, with, your, with your couple of weeks notice, we're about out of time for July. Ah, ah, couple of weeks. Okay. But y'all, that, that's y'all's room. But, but that, would, that, would give us time, that would give us time for you to draft it, us to look at it, and, and maybe make sure we're all get the all in it, back. get it back to you, have this wrapped up by okay. August. So we can get to the back to the August. Completed by, yeah. around, by early August. We're going to get this done by August. Yes, sir. Who are the us? The, the committee. That the committee reviews it. That the, uh, the, 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 the Mr. Barton would submit what he what his writings are to the committee members. Okay, when the, the committee members stand up. Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to say, the committee members stand up. It's you two, Mr. Perry. No, no, he gave this spot up. He gave this spot up. Is there anybody else to be on the committee? Miss Hines. Ah, it was a nine. It was a nine. Okay, I just want to know if anybody else. They were saying they want to keep it. So, are we going to be able to see it before the city council meeting? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it'll so be we'll keep everything up. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully, if Mr. Parker gets the draft, I'm not going to send it right. Mr. Parker gets the draft, it. he forwards it. This space reports it to us, and then you know we can. We, can we, we, do, we need to have another meeting about whatever, yes. just so we can publicly all agree on. Yes. Yes. So is so. How many do we have now? One, two, it should be nine. Yeah, it should be nine. Should be nine. Should be nine. Who's the ninth person? Somebody's missing. Is it Kaiya? Yeah, Kaiya. Yeah, Kaiya. Yeah, Kaiya. Well, I mean, we, this enough, we got somewhere to pay, so. Uh, well, what I'm saying is, he did mention if, uh, if it's a slot for one more person, is there a reason? We, nine, they asked for an odd number. Is there one person, because we, we're keeping this within nine? So what we're looking at overall, notification terminology we use. I like that dude. Just tell people what's required to have privilege. That you got to go through this process, making a notice. You got to go through the process to do what you're already doing. Basically, yeah, right. you're doing okay. job. Yeah. They're already doing it. It's already being done. Yeah, I mean, you, you're doing it as far as the when they, the, the ordinance wants to cover every city, building, and stuff like that. You're already doing it when you break a place. It's just like that. Yes, it is. Did you read it? Yes, I did. You fill out the paperwork, right? Yes. You 
know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You're already doing it. We already do it, bro. We can't hear it. Uh, <laughs> so things that we've been really, really doing in the past, just need to go on that piece of paper and what Cedric's trying to say. Yeah. It's basically, you need to be able to check that same piece of paper or a similar piece of paper okay. with blessing. So, yes, that's what we're doing, Mr. Seddy. So, uh, yes, sir. So, so, basically, the questions that would need to be answered would be who, what, when, where, how many, and point of contact is basically it. Right. Basically. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that would be the word. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, can we agree to dismiss, and then once um, I have the ordinance, then we will... Contact all committee people, get it to you, and then set the date that we can meet, and then out, and then come back in August with our recommendation. But the public will be able to be here and listen to us right. and everything. Yes, ma'am. I just need to request that you uh, notify me you know, before you have a meeting or any kind of conversation about it. Oh, absolutely. That's all right. All right. All right. Then we can be dismissed. Yes, close to the I'll second that. <laughs> All right.